Hello everyone! Welcome back! Hi, I am Susan. I'm the owner of the Flying Needles here in Williamsburg, Virginia. We are located at 5251 John Tyler Highway. Uh, we're right beside the subway. We're a lovely local yarn shop. And wow, it's been a while since I've talked to you guys. There's been so much that has happened lately. We had a retreat. We had a hugely successful customer appreciation day. We had people camping out our side, outside our door at 8.30 in the morning. We open our doors at 10, mind you. 8.30 in the morning, they were sitting out on the big old sidewalk in their camping chairs, knitting and having a good old time. And by the time that we opened our doors, there were like 25 people in line waiting to get in here on Customer Appreciation Day, which was also LYS Day, if you guys were unaware. I uh, hope that you visited your local yarn shop, wherever you might have been. You know, it's super important to keep um, our yarn shops all, you know, supported and where you can go and touch and feel and look at colors and squish and, you know, just have a grand old time. Um, so, wow, yeah, it's been a little bit of a minute since I've seen you. Um, you're welcome to connect with us at our website, flyingneedlesyarn.com. We are on Instagram, we're on Facebook. We have our Ravelry page. We're in a group there, uh, Flying Needles VA. So you're welcome to hop on over to that Ravelry page, introduce yourself, tell us you know where you are and how you found us. We just love, love, love our people and our community because you know that's what an LYS is all about. So for those of you on the other screen who have not been to a local yarn, local yarn shop, and I had two groups of people coming in on local yarn shop day, my customer appreciation day, who had never been in a yarn shop. And so, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was kind of an experience for them. And you're going to have to pardon me, but we are having like a tsunami of pollen here in Williamsburg. <coughs> and for the first time ever, I have... Allergies. My kids call them the allergies it's when they were little. I just that's what I usually call them. So I'm having, you know, that's the other thing. I haven't been quite feeling myself lately. Another reason why I haven't seen you in a while. So I'm having breathing problems and coughing. I don't know about you on the other side, but are you having allergies? Oh my gosh. First time ever. So anyway, <coughs> I apologize for that little rant. Um, so what were we talking about? We were talking about our yarn shop community and local yarn shops and coming to the first. So we had two people coming into our shop for the first time ever and their eyes just got so big. There was, you know, so many people here and such a color explosion. <laughs> so it was a lot for them. Made them feel at home. They got to touch and feel and see colors and it was just lovely, lovely fun for everybody who came and who were there that day. So let me see, I have my little agenda here to talk about um, a couple of things. Um, I think I want to, I want to talk about, I want to talk about our Customer Appreciation Day event and why we did such a huge event right on the heels of the retreat, which was, whew, that was a massive event. Um, being a local yarn shop, uh, I hear people who, who talk all the time about buying yarn online and it you know I was a yarn shop I was a yarn purchaser before I was ever a yarn shop owner and I gotta tell you it's not the same experience yeah I, I've done it I, confessions I've, I've done it and when the yarn came to my house it wasn't the color I wanted it wasn't the texture I wanted. It was, it was a completely awful experience. And you know, <coughs> there's something to be said for being in a shop and being able to see and touch and feel the yarn that's going to be sliding through your hands, whether you're crocheting or knitting, because um, that's part of the experience for us. I know it is for me. And. So it's super important that wherever you are, that you support your local yarn shop. And um, we have a lovely community here in Williamsburg who supports us. We have our regulars and people who come in all the time. And it's sort of like walking in to your local post office. Um, 
there is such a sense of community that has sprung out of this this little shop and um, my customers have been super loyal and they've been helpful they're vested in my shop and I just wanted to do something really nice for them I felt really I felt I felt it very important um, because sure it's easier and cheaper for you guys in some cases to go online and buy yarn I know I, I get it but I um, I really appreciate all of the customers who have supported us in the first year and a half of us being open. It's no small thing, you know, when you have, you know, getting a little personal, I have, I have two daughters and, you know, one was in college when I opened and so it was, it was super risky and they all, you know, they knew it and they want me to be successful because they enjoy being here. So it was my way of saying thank you for their support at the retreat, for their support during my first year and a half, because, you know, without, without you guys, my customers, I am absolutely nothing. And so I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for being so supportive and, you know, coming out with a pat, you know, patting my shoulder saying, good job, you know, giving me constructive advice um, what yarns to bring in, what makes them happy, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a great place for them to come and be. It feels like, you know, what I intended it to be was a beacon of light for people, you know, a place where they could come and a happy space and safe space that you could come and be around other people and just enjoy their company and with nothing in common other than, you know, the craft and the love of fiber. So, you on the other side, if you are one of my customers, I just wanna say, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you very much for being so supportive. My first year and a half, small businesses fail. The failure rate for small businesses is huge the first three years. So um, the lights are on, the doors are open right now, um, and honest to goodness, that's all you can really ask for. And my daughter is actually graduating in a couple of weeks. So yeah. Uh, that one who's in college and the other one is just graduated high school. So it's a big year for me and my family here in Williamsburg. Um, so thank you. Thank you on the other side for being such wonderful customers and always coming in with a smile on your face and being the lovely people that you are. Um, we have some things coming up. You know, you know me. I'm always working on something. Um, so we have some announcements that are going to be coming down the pike again. Yes, more secrets. So just keep watching for those things. We like to keep you on your toes. We like to, for you. We like to have fun. You like to have fun. Everybody's super happy when all that happens. So just you know, keep your eyes posted. There's some good things coming. Let me see. What else do we have here? Okay, I have some finished objects. And so did you? Did you notice? Did you notice this lovely thing I have around my neck? Did you notice? Okay, here, I'm gonna take it off. This is Josh Ricks Rubinsky's Oscillate. This is the exclusive pattern that he made for our retreat. It reminds me of a dragon's wing. I just adore it. Now, I think that I previewed this in the one that he knitted, which was in a dark purple and sort of a day glow purple, some grays, but this one's mine. We, I did this as part of our a knit along that we did with Josh, Josh's pattern, the Oscillate, which uh, you can see it on Ravelry, but you can't buy it anywhere from but here, the Flying Needles. If you want a copy, you can give us a call here at the shop and we'll, we can get you a um, copy of the pattern and we can ship it to you. Uh, the number here at the shop is 757-345-3655. So anyway, if you notice, this beautiful project has an I-cord. This is the starting point right here. You start with this I-cord 
and there's an I cord all the way around it. And it was my first project with an I cord. And I really had a lot of fun with it. And it even, you even have this beautiful I cord bind off. This whole end here is an I cord. And funny fact, did you know that an I cord bind off takes about four times the amount of yarn that than a typical bind off? So this is super interesting. It takes three different colors of fingering weight yarns. And of course, this one is done in Three Irish Girls or Dorn Lux. Three Irish Girls came down, the owners came down, Erin and Kelly came down for um, our retreat. I'm sure you saw, if you haven't seen the video, the video prior to this one was an interview with everybody who was at the retreat. Um, and their Dorn Lux is just has 15% nylon in it. It just makes it feel so beautiful. And then it's gonna have some resistance to wearing because of the nylon. It's just gonna be super lovely. And some of it's held single strands, like you can see the more transparent area, like right here under my nose. That's the single strands and then the double strands look a little thicker. It's just a super interesting marled effect. And if you see there's some lace, there's a couple of lace pieces in here. Yeah, it's just, it was lovely to knit. Had a great time doing that. So that's my finished object. Came off the needles just a couple of days ago and blocked it with some Rapture Eucalon, one of my favorite, one of my favorite Eucalons and wool washes. See, you just throw it on and just put it on every which way. Sorry about the hair, I gotta flip the hair around and make sure that that all gets padded back out. So that's my finished object for you guys. And then I also have for you, I have some works in progress. I have two with me today. And very often as a yarn shop owner, much of our works in progress is, turns into a class. And so I have a class that's coming up on the forest weave sweater. It is on Ravelry and it's a perfect sort of summer tea. And pardon me, I'm gonna bring up my phone so I can show you what this looks like. So that's the forest weave tea. And it is on Ravelry. If you just type in forest weave, you should be able to find it. And I am doing it in this beautiful, oh look, it matches my wall. The Louette Euroflax, 100% linen. This is really nice yarn. I have never knit with linen before. This, so this color, this color is called Orchid. And this color is natural sort of see them together right there yeah they're just super beautiful um, but I am knitting I don't know if you've ever worked with linen before it's just it's not gonna skein up in a cake really nicely this is a hand a hand wound ball um, and I have to tell you a story about this particular project so <coughs> excuse me I started this forest weave <clears throat> and I purchased myself a pair of signature needles from the retreat and I gotta tell you they were too slick for this yarn I had to take them off and I'm knitting on something that I never ever ever knit on and that is bamboo. I am not a bamboo fan. I like my stainless steel chow goo needles. So here is the beginning. I'm just trying to straighten this out so it doesn't look like a hot, hot mess when you see it. So this is the forest weave. And it's sort of curling up right now. So linen is a super interesting yarn to knit with. It changes its composition when it's blocked it comes just becomes a lot softer and it kind of blooms and um, just turns into something different than what it looks like on your needles um, but 
this is just, I love this color. I love this sort of crimson, burgundy, claret color. I just love it. So here we go. This is the front side. You know, you can just see right in through there. It's just lovely. Having such a good time. So beautiful. If you've never had a chance to um, knit with linen, you should definitely try it. It's it's more it's different than any other yarn that I've knit on before. It sort of knits like straw. But I know this is like one of those projects I'm committed to because I know that the final project will just be outstanding and it'll be a conversation piece. And frankly, it's going to be lovely to wear. <coughs> I've kind of moved from a shawl phase to a more practical phase of what am I actually going to wear because, you know, my, my drawers are full of scarves and shawls and I love and adore my Find Your Fade, but they're, you know, uh, so I've moved to sweaters, and so that's what I'm up to now, and this is actually going to be a class, and this sweater is actually knit from side to side, so you start at like a side seam, and you come across the front, and then you make a second piece, and you seam them together, and pick up some stitches, and you do some sleeves. So, and it's got this beautiful cable in it, uh, and in the middle of it, hang on, give me a second, and in the middle of it, you see those ridges, those open weaves, yeah, that's a yarn over you drop, how fun is that? So, I'm just super excited to see this one through, <clears throat> and the class is coming up, and there are some fun people in the class, I think we're going to have a really good time. So that's one of my works in progress. And here are my, these are the Chowgu Bamboo Interchangeable Needles. And so far, this is the first time I've used their Chowgu Bamboo Interchangeable. Uh, and I actually like these better than their regular bamboo needles. These are, they feel super, super soft and they're warm, they're not cold. Because I know you bamboo lovers out there. You don't like cold needles. Um, the joins are super smooth. I haven't had a single problem. I just, I, I'm, I'm really I'm surprised. I am digging these needles. 100%. So, I just moved on to these needles a couple days ago. So, it's still early yet. But, if I have any problems, I will be sure to let you guys know. So, that's that and then my second work in progress I've been working on this this is sort of my mindless knitting project um, this is also a garment if you guys have seen Hohi Locatelli's boxy there is a fingering weight version and a worsted version well uh, Amanda with Lorna, Lorna's Laces, Amanda Jarvis with Lorna's Laces. She, we had a trunk show with her recently, and she had one of these Hohe Locatelli boxies, except she put a spin on it. Their Lorna's Laces has a lovely yarn called Helen's Lace. It's 50% silk, 50% wool, and in lace weight, 1,200 yards, okay, like a lot of yardage, like you have to leave that yarn with me and it takes me like a day to wind it, it takes forever for that to wind, so um, I loved it so much that frankly I just had to, I had to make one, and then I saw this color and just totally totally flipped out oh yeah purple and green fly needles colors in a ball how happy is that so there's the yarn Helen's lace 1200 yards 50% silk 
50% wool. And then the boxy. So I did my swatch, and basically what I did was I just took what the gauge was supposed to be and went up a needle size till I got the right gauge for lace. There I am. How fun is that? Now it's curling up a little bit. Been in the bag. Got this nice little edge here. So this is a bottom up sweater. And it's meant to have a lot of positive ease to it. So you know when these people throw out these terms, positive ease, you're like, what in the world are they talking about? But I really don't want to say anything because I don't want to feel stupid. Positive ease was one of those things. It's a it's important to actually know. So if you don't know what positive ease is, let me just take a moment to say, uh, and let you know what it is. Positive ease is, so if you measure your chest size, and let's say your chest size is 39, okay? And you look up a sweater pattern on Ravelry and it says six inches positive ease. And you're like, what in the world does that mean? That means that around your bust size, if you are going for a size 39 and it has six inches of positive ease, that means that it's going to be six inches uh, more than your 39. So six and 39 is 45. So it's going to wind up being 45 inches around your bust, which means that it's going to be loose. So this particular sweater, the boxy, has like 12 inches of positive ease, something ridiculous. And so... Who doesn't love a little bulky, a little super loose sweater in the summer, you know? And silk is a really funny fabric material. It, um, it lets the, it keeps you warm when you're cold, but it also allows the, the, the transfer of heat. It's, it's just one of those things that is just really lovely to wear in the summer um, especially if you've got an open weave like this and I say heat transfer I don't mean like a silk blouse I'm talking about yarns that's what I'm talking about when you've got this sort of open weave it's nice it's really it's nice to work with in the summer it's not one of those yarns that make your hands sweat you know so I'm having a grand time with this I picked this back up it had been sort of hibernating for a little while um, but I'm going to keep this at the shop and work on this on the floor when I have customers in and I can just knit, 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 because that's all it is. It's a whole lot of knitting. Like if you've ever done the sock head slouch hat, this is on the order of that. So you can just keep knit, 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 knitting. I took this to the doctor's office the other day because, you know, they start talking to you and you just keep knitting and just, you know, they're like, oh, I don't mean to disturb you. I'm like, you're not disturbing me. I'm just knitting. It's fine. Uh, hands are busy and just makes you feel like you're being productive while they're talking to you or while you're waiting for the doctor to come in you know when they call you back in the way you're not in the waiting room anymore you're in the actual room and it's that 20 minute window that you're waiting for someone you hear the clipboard get pulled out of the, waiting for the that noise of the clipboard board to be pulled off the door you know what I'm talking about so anyway those are my works in progress let's see what else do I have to show you here today um, I have one of those special announcements that I'm going to make with you guys here today. Uh, I'm kind of excited about it because I just got it in today. So yes, it's time for that. Um, actually, before I do that, let's talk about let's talk about new yarn before I do that. So new yarns are so much fun. It's like Christmas around here at all times. And we had um, one of those little moments recently. So Plymouth Yarn Company in Bristol, Pennsylvania, came out with this new Mercerized Cotton yarn. And these little cupcake truffles are just absolutely beautiful. Um, it is 100% 100, 100 Mercerized Cotton. So this is the colorway. Look at that teal and purple and light blue Oof, so fun and then this color like a rose and a yeah sort of 
corally color and some fuchsia. It's just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. I love this. Did I show you the price tag? Oh, I was just gauche. So anyway, um, so I'm mercerized and gassed, and they have this lovely, lovely sheen on it. That is just absolutely beautiful. It is machine wash cold. So there you go. You got your little bit super wash uh, cottons. And then I'm looking for yardage to give you guys. It's 240 yards. 240 yards in that little cupcake. Look at that thing. See it? So good for shawls, good for little summer teas, market bags, anything that you might want to knit on. And I believe that this is a DK, DK yarn. It's just got this nice, almost has the sheen of bamboo. Never seen a cotton have like, you see the, you see the light sort of reflecting in it. It's, it's got that sheen to it. You're not imagining it. <coughs> Excuse me. So, all right, are you ready? Here's my announcement. We are launching another knit along because that's all we do. Knit, 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 knit. Crochet, cro cro crochet, 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 crochet. So our my lovely sidekick, Rosemary, has been knitting on this for a little while. She's getting ready to head out of her town to go see her son and go on vacation and where she's headed. It, she needed something a little warm and she wanted something new. So meet the Danzig. Danzig, D-A-N-Z-I-G. I cannot pronounce the pattern designer's name. So I just, I don't want to rip that design name to shreds. So I'm just going to be respectful. So this is a cute, cute shawl. And I'm going to have to have one of these. I know what I just said. I was overdoing shawls, but I need one of these. I definitely need one of these. And so it starts here. You start right down here and you go up and then you see these cute little so those are short rows and that color work and that's just lovely so this particular yarn the white is Madeline Tosh Merino light salt and the color is Malabrigo's Mikita and a Versario and it just lovely. It's like two of the big M's, you know? So here are those two. So you need two of the main colors, two skeins of fingering weight, main colors. And then you need one skein of fingering weight, coordinate, this, uh, the stripe color is what you need. And so here they are, sort of, here's the salt. I love this salt. It has, I know that you guys have seen the speckle craze. Do you see those little flecks? It's just, it's all these flecks. It's really subtle all the way throughout this entire hank of yarn. And if you've never knit with Madeline Tosh Merino Light, you are missing out. It is some lovely, lovely yarn. So the Merino Light has 420 yards. It's 100% Merino wool. It is just, I love those flecks. And then the flecks are like purples and reds and blues and pinks, some yellow, and it's just super, super subtle. I just, I love it. And then the second one, here's the Anniversario. If you've never seen Malabrigo's Anniversario, it's like a party in a yarn. It's like every color possible based on pinks and purples. So hello, do you see my wall? Hello. It's just, ugh, it's just so beautiful. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. Look at that. Look at those colors. Oh, so beautiful. So I'm trying to decide what colors to use right now. And I think this is a, this is sort of going off my particular color wheel. This is not in my wheelhouse at all but I fell in love with this sort of the stardust colorway and I, it looks like a sunset to me and so I I just 
I had to work with it. And so that's what I did. So I'm thinking about another purple and green garment. I think that's what I'm going to do the dance again. But I don't know. Jury's still out. Because I am really digging Rosemary's Danzig. It, it's just, oh, look at that. It's so pretty. And then I did pull up a picture on my phone that I could show you guys in a different, in a different color. So maybe you could see the short rows. So you could also use a gradient kit. Here's a Danzig and what looks to be a gradient kit. And those little, I just love those little things, the little short rows on there. They're just so pretty. So, it's a lot actually like the Find Your Fade. So, it has a spine in the middle. And then it's got this. You sort of resolve here on the corner. And then you finish right here. And then this guy goes way out. So I, Rosemary actually just brought this in today. So I haven't actually had a chance to take a peek at how this color is getting carried up the side. So let's take a peek and let's see what we can see. Interesting. So I'm not sure how she's carrying this color up. So I'm going to have to go check out this pattern for sure. Super interesting. So here's the back side. Yeah, when you look at the SBM knitters, when you look at the back side of things, it's just super interesting. So I think, from what I'm seeing... thinking that she did not carry the colors. Looks like she snipped them all and had lots of ends to weave. I'm okay. It's beautiful. I, it'll be all right. I think it's going to be more than okay. But anyway, we start this knit along May. Let me see. Let me just take a look. We're going to start this knit along. sometime in May so it's coming up really soon so you want to pay attention you can go to my website you can get on the email it'll be announced there and if you're far away never you fear I've had people from Texas and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan <coughs> all participate in my knit alongs so how my knit alongs work is that you you know you can uh, call in on the casting party night and after that, you can post pictures to Facebook or Instagram and just tag it, uh, tag it with the hashtag that we're going to set up, which I believe it's going to be um, FNYKL2018. Um, one more time, FNY, and that's F is in Frank, FNYKAL2018. And then you can see some of the other projects that we've done as a knit along this year, too, which would be this one. This is the only one we've done this year. So that's the Danzig. And it's just gonna be, it's gonna be a beautiful one. Let's get it back to the front for you guys. So there you go. Don't you need that in your wardrobe? I know that I do. I know that I need this in my wardrobe for sure. So just a couple of things coming up that you wanna mark your calendar for. If you are in the Williamsburg area on Saturday, May 19th, I just want to let you know that we will be at the High Fiber Festival in Toano, Virginia. If you've never been to the High Fiber Festival, this will be the second year that it has started. I imagine it's going to be growing just like any other fiber festival. Um, but we're going to be on site this year and then lots of other fabulous vendors are going to be there as well. Um, there, I know that they have an event on Facebook that you can go check out. So May 19th, Saturday, if you're in the area, come on over. And then we will be offering some special stuff for people who go to the Fiber Festival and then come here to the shop. So you want to visit us if you come by. And if you saw it, if you're coming because you saw this podcast, 
you be sure to let me know that because I will be out there. And mark your calendars right now. I don't care where you are, but Saturday, June 9th is Worldwide Knit in Public Day. Now, I said that right. It's Worldwide Knit in Public Day. We took over the sidewalk here at Williamsburg Crossing uh, last year for our event. And you can go to our website and see some of those pictures. We had a blast. It was so much fun. So, if you are in the area, come on down. 10 to 5. We're taking it over. Rain or shine. There's an awning over my sidewalk. And it's about 20 degrees cooler under the awning than it is out in the parking lot. We did, note, we did take note of that last year. So, um, it's going to be a grand time. If you can't make it here, you need to look go to Worldwide Knit and Public Day and try to find an event near you. There are lots of events held uh, throughout the world on this particular. I think 52 countries are participating. Uh, something really crazy and unreal. So, they'll, and if there's not one near you, then you just need to start one because there are lots of fun and you go hang out in some public place and you just sit there and knit. It's great. It's super fun. So, yeah, Worldwide Knit in Public Day, Saturday, June 9th. If you're here, come on by. So that is everything that I have to tell you. Thank you for being patient with my cough, these crazy allergies. Who knew? I'm on like a million medicines. Oh, it's so bad. So we're hoping for rain so it can just blow this pollen tsunami right on out. Um, so I hope to see you soon. And... I hope that you had a good time. I know it's a little crazy. I don't feel like I have my head screwed on tight. So thank you for your patience. And then if you come to the shop because of this podcast, be sure to tell us that as well. Okay. I hope you guys all have a great and fabulous day. Thanks for supporting your local yarn shop. If you're one of my customers, thank you for supporting me. And Go try to find you some fingering weight yarn for this lovely Danzig knit along. We're going to have a great time. And thanks a lot for being with me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.